What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is Micro Camper Build Series Part 2. In Part 1, I basically built the frame, showed you how all that was done. There's lots of good information in there. So if you've never built a trailer frame before, highly recommend you go watch that video first. In this one, we're gonna be primering the frame, coating it with a bed liner, as well as installing the timber and axle suspension system, showing you how to set the toe, how to adjust the camber. Also, we're gonna be wiring up the trailer for the lights. In preparation for priming the frame, went ahead and sanded everything down with 120 grit and then wiped it clean with some acetone on a shop towel. Uh, get all the debris and grease and everything off that would anything that would make the paint not stick very well. The primer we're using is Raptor Liner Acid Etch number no. 9. It took me about two cans of that to cover this uh, frame completely. Obviously, once you do one side, you got to flip it over and prime the other. I let it dry typically about a day before I end up handling it just to kind of make sure it hardens up some and I don't end up scratching off the surface of the frame. Here we've moved on to applying our Raptor truck bag coating. I'm applying it with compressed air. There's actually a kit you can buy with a little gun. Uh, it comes in one liter bottles. You mix the hardener, screw it onto the gun, shake it up for two minutes, and then you can go around and spray it all over your project. And the stuff lays on pretty good. Uh, I recommend taking your time here and making sure you're not missing any spots. The gray primer does help quite a bit with that. Uh, it lets you be able to see what is not black and what is still left gray. But I mean, I, I went around for quite a while and was finding new spots here and there. So I really took my time and made sure that I got full coverage on the frame. And before flipping this over and doing the other side, I did wait about 24 to 48 hours to let it cure and harden up quite a bit. You may notice we got some masking tape on the top side of the trailer, and that is because we are masked off where our steelet is. I let the frame sit for about 24 hours before peeling the masking tape off. As you can see, uh, normally protects it, makes a nice clean line, and keeps our surface exposed like we were planning for it to be. All right, with the wrapped runner all dry, you saw I was peeling all that tape off to leave our steelet surface exposed. So this whole top layer right here is just steelet, not Raptor liner and you can weld through that stuff. So that's how we're still gonna be able to weld the camper to the frame of the trailer without having any unpainted surfaces left over. Next up, we're getting our timber and axle suspension installed, and we're gonna go ahead and torque all these bolts down to 95 foot-pounds. They are a grade eight half inch bolt. I find it best to install one side. Let's go ahead and slide your cross member tube in uh, and push it back through so that we have space to install your other one. And then once the other one's installed, you can slide your cross member tube into your other side and then bolt it all together. All right guys, with our timber and axle suspension all installed, we're gonna work on setting the camber. So as you can see, the frame is at zero degrees, which would say it's sitting on a level plane. Uh, how we're gonna measure the camber on the suspension, just go ahead and put that on there. So it looks like it's at a uh, positive one and a half degrees. So Timbered includes these shims right here. And the whole point of these shims is you can add them in between where the spindle sandwiches to the suspension itself, and that will actually adjust the camber. So we got a couple shims we're gonna go ahead and add. I'm gonna go ahead and do two and two on this outside one on both sides, and we'll see where we're at. If you're looking for a video on how I assembled the hubs on the suspension, I do have a full video on that as well that I will link in the description. Guys, as you see, adding those two shims got us to about 0.4, so a whole 1.1 degrees about. You could even add more shims if you want it closer to zero, but I actually think I'm gonna leave it at 0.4 because just like car suspension, when it's up in the air, you're gonna have some positive camber. Once this is loaded down, this is gonna end up coming in and twisting in just a little bit more, I think. And it'll be about perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 0.4. We're gonna get the other side set, and then we'll get to worry about setting the alignment on the trailer and adjusting the toe. We're moving on to setting the toe adjustment. The toe adjustment is basically the wheel's position in accordance to the trailer, whether it's towed out or towed in. We're gonna go ahead, we want it to be a 16th towed in. So what we've done here, probably a little bit of a better way to do this, but all I've done is taken a level, clamped it to the face of our hub, and that gives us two points to measure from on each side. And then on this side, I just took some one by one and clamped it to our hub as well. So from there, we can pull tape from that edge to this edge. All right, it looks like we're landing at about 75 and 7 16 So now we'll go ahead and measure the front. Measuring this front side, it looks like we're about 75 and 7 16 as well. So it's about dead even. 
Uh, typically on a car, you want to be about a 16th towed in. I think a trailer, this suspension is not going to move as much going down the road. So being dead even, I think I'm okay with. I may knock it into a 16th. I'll look online and see. With the tow in set on our trailer, we're going to run around and torque all of our bolts to 90 to 95 foot pounds and mark it with our paint marker for some witness marks so we can see if they ever loosen up in the future. Now we can go ahead and get our wheels on the trailer. If you're using Toyota wheels that use OEM style lug nuts, there are special lug nuts you can order on Amazon that are the correct thread pitch, but also the correct shape for Toyota wheels. Uh, and those will be linked in the description. All right, we got our timbers all bolted up. Everything's torqued to spec. Went ahead and threw our wheels on, threw our fenders on, just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. You can see the poke looks pretty good out from the fender. It has a nice aesthetic to it, and it's not poked out too much or sunk in. Next up, we're gonna start on wiring the trailer and getting our lights mounted. So first thing we're gonna do is mount our lights up. These are gonna be our tail lights. They're actually gonna go along the back part of the frame. I'll show you me mounting those up. And then these are gonna be our amber corners, which are gonna go up on the front of the trailer and one on each side. They're nice and bright, sit flush. They're not hanging out too much and easy to break or get hung up on the trail. For these front marker lights, I like to place them on the front corners of the trailer. You're gonna to have to drill out a hole that is at least three quarter of inches big for these ones in particular. Um, and then after our outside hole is drilled, I go to the inside of the frame here and drill a little bit smaller of a hole. That way our wires can actually pass through there and that'll give us access to wire them up with the trailer harness. Then as we move to the driver's side of the trailer, it's a rinse and repeat. And then I'm also taking a little bit of paint on a Q-tip and there's gonna be some bare exposed metal after you drill your hole. So just go ahead and paint that on there. That's some primer. And then when that dries, I'll go ahead and paint some steel it on there as well. Then on the back of the trailer here, I just measured so each tail light was evenly spaced away from the edge of the trailer. And I went ahead and drilled, I believe it was a 5 8 hole. So the back stem of our tail light can stick through the frame and then also drill another smaller access hole on the back side for the wires to pass completely through the frame. And then on the main tongue beam, just behind the very front wall of the trailer, go ahead and drill you a hole on each side. And this is where the wires will come out to run to our marker lights. All right guys, with our frame holes drilled, next thing we're gonna do is test our lights. Figure out what is our power, what's our ground. Normally in automotive cases, ground is black. Um, in this case, for some reason, it is positive. So it's always good to test it before you install it and wire it up incorrectly and wonder why it doesn't work. LEDs, you cannot reverse polarity, has to be the way it goes. As far as our tail light goes, white is ground. Uh, you can see the black will be our running light. And then the red, which is much brighter, will be our brake and turn. So for the installation of the rear tail lights, I'm putting them in the place where they're gonna be. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make some marks and I'll use some self-tapping screws to hold them in place. Once I get my holes drilled, I go ahead and pull it back off and then I'm gonna run a bead of silicone around that stem and then also around where the screws are gonna be seating and go ahead and screw that on. And then after that, I'll even run a bead of silicone around the whole edge of the taillight just to further solidify that we're not gonna get any water intrusion. The front is gonna be the same deal. Gonna add some silicone to our gasket that comes with the light. Gonna put that in there and then also gonna silicone around our light. Go ahead and slip it into place and then wipe up our excess so we don't have any sloppy extras. All right guys, we got all of our lights all in there. You saw they're all silicone, they're nice and watertight. Uh, before we can run the rest of these wires, I have one more hole to drill in the frame. And I think it's gonna end up being about right here. So this front side of our harness is gonna be the RB style seven pin connector, which looks like this. Uh, this allows you to add trailer brakes, uh, run some power to like an auxiliary battery or stuff like that. I'm only gonna be utilizing the regular lighting circuit at the moment but I want the ability to add stuff like trailer brakes or anything like that later on down the road. So basically this main harness runs to a box just like this. And then from our box, we just run just like our regular trailer wiring like any other trailer would be. I'm not sure where I'm gonna mount this box yet. I might mount it inside of another box up here on the tongue, but with the bike carrier, don't really know what kind of room I got until I get there. Uh, it may get mounted on the front wall right here. It should be nice and simple. Just have to shorten this cable but uh, we're just kind of going to have to see. So for now, we're going to drill our hole here and run all of our wires to our lights, and then our wiring will be done for the moment. For the hole drilled, what I've taken, I think they call it like a fish tape. It's basically like a kind of a hard plastic line. I fed it in my hole down there and ran it all the way up to here. 
until I could get some tweezers and reach in there and grab it and pull it through. And then I've taped my green, my yellow, and one of my browns to this because I want these to go to the end because that'll be our left turn, right turn, and marker lights. So we need these to go all the way to the end of the trailer so we can feed our tail lights. So next you just uh, grab the other end and basically pull it back through and it'll feed it all the way down to there. Right, with our wires to the back here, yellow is left turn, green is right turn, and then our brown is our marker lights. And all I've done for the marker lights, I know there's only one wire that went back here, so what I did is I pulled some extra through, I snipped it, used a weather pack connector, connected it there, and then used the extra length that was left over and two leads into the connector here, uh, and then run them out to both sides so you can feed our tail lights the power they need. For our front marker lights, we did the same thing we did to the rear. Took our other brown wire because it comes with two on that harness and ran it out this one side, doubled up our connections here, and then I'm gonna pull this back into the frame and run one wire this way and one wire this way. Before we make any connections here, I'm gonna be sheathing the wire in this kind of like this plastic sleeve. I will have this linked in the description as well. Just kind of as an extra protective coating and also it looks nice. And then also I got some assorted heat shrink from Harbor Freight and then some clips uh, that I'm going to use some self-tapping screws to secure the harness to the frame itself. What you see me doing here is going around to all the holes we drilled in the frame and we're going ahead and putting these rubber grommets in there. You can get these rubber grommets from Harbor Freight as well and they come in a package very similar to the hose clamps and the heat shrink. Next up, we're making our final connections up here for the front marker lights. We're sliding some of that braided plastic uh, sheathing I showed you on there first. And then we're gonna go ahead and make a connection with the weather pack connector. We're gonna ground our white wire from our LED light right where our clamp's gonna be. Make that connection to our black wire, which is our positive, And then we are good to go up there. Moving on to the rear taillight assembly. Our yellow is gonna be connected to our red for our brake on the driver's side. And then our green is gonna be connected to our red for brake on the passenger side. And this will act as our brake and our turn signal all in one. And then our brown is our marker light. So that'll just be connected to our, to our tail circuit, which is black. All right, now we're just gonna do a little light test now that we're all wired up. These are our running lights. And then here are our brake lights. You can see they're uh, quite a bit brighter. And then also we know that our brake lights are functioning. That means our left and right turn signal will function as well. And of course our marker lights up front are functioning. For the size, they're actually very bright, which is cool. A nice and compact package. Plenty of visibility added to your trailer. And all I'm doing to test this, I have a little battery in the garage. It goes to a four wheeler. They said I just took a wire from the ground post up to the trailer and grounded it to that. And then these are all of my power wires going to the positive post on the battery. And you can add and subtract them as you wish to verify which ones are working. What about wraps it up for the trailer wiring? You see in the back here, I did pretty much the same thing I did up front. Came out real nice. After I got it all wired up, I actually took some silicone and filled in any gaps that I had in our holes that we have right here where the wires enter the frame. All right guys, so that's about it for part two. We got the trailer coated all wired up, our lights on and everything like that. Suspension's all sitting right, alignment's good. Uh, so we don't have to worry about this stuff as we move forward with building the actual camper. If you like this video out, go ahead and subscribe. We got plenty more of the build series coming up, maybe two or three more videos, possibly more. We'll just have to see. So stick around and we'll see you next time.